Everybody loves cars. We all dream of owning a fast car one day, whether we're a car enthusiast or not. Unfortunately, that Ferrari or Lamborghini we so badly desire is a bit too expensive. $300,000 too expensive to be exact. So what do you do if you want a fast car on a budget? Do you buy a used Honda Accord and stick a new exhaust and spoiler on it to make it look like a fast car? Or do you buy a VR headset and play your fastest car in a video game? Well... In front of me is a 2016 Chevrolet Camaro 2SS. It's a sports car made by General Motors, which looks cool, sounds nice, costs a reasonable amount, and is loaded with a bunch of features. And today I'm going to give you a comprehensive review. First, we're going to go through the features and specifications of the Camaro. Then we'll go on a test drive. Buckle up, this is going to be one exciting review. Let's go over the various Camaro trims. The base model Camaro comes with a 2.0-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder, making 275 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. You can step up to a 3.6-liter V6, which makes 335 horsepower and 284 pound-feet of torque. More power, less torque. Or you can get the Camaro SS with 455 horsepower V8. There's also a 650 horsepower Camaro ZL1, which costs more than $60,000, although people generally use that for track driving and not daily driving. A base model Chevy Camaro with the four-cylinder engine will set you back roughly $25,000. A Chevy Camaro SS like this one costs between forty dollars and $45,000, depending on how well you equip it. That may sound like a lot of money, unless you look at these cars on the used market. A second-hand Chevy Camaro SS, roughly three to four years old, with between 20 and 40,000 miles, costs between twenty-five and $30,000 on average. That's an excellent deal considering it's equivalent to a new Honda Accord, a low to mid-range Honda Accord to be exact. The Camaro we have with us is a fully loaded 2SS model, which comes with all sorts of standard features. Without further ado, let's get straight into the review. The Camaro, like most other GM cars, comes with this nice key fob. You get remote lock and unlock, remote start, press this to open the trunk, and panic. Now, the Camaro is roughly 190 inches long and 75 inches wide. It's also 53 inches tall, so it's a relatively compact car. It'll fit in most compact spaces. Great for, great for the CD. Let's go ahead and check out the interior. Now, the Camaro comes with the usual host of convenience features. You get memory seats, power blocks, power windows, power seats, obviously. You get a digital gauge cluster, and at least a half digital gauge cluster, and a nice center screen in the middle. Despite being a high-performance sports car, the Camaro comes with some pretty nice comfort features. You get dual-zone automatic climate controlled. You set the temperature with these pretty interesting dials, never seen these in any other car. You also get heated seats, ventilated seats, and surprisingly, a heated steering wheel, all in a 455 horsepower sports car. How cool can that be? With regards to electronics, the Camaro comes with an electronic parking brake, nice digital gauge cluster. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of information which is displayed on the screen. The tachometer and speedometer are physical dials, however. You do also get home link, convenient for opening a garage doors. A 9-speaker Bose audio system with excellent bass, by the way. Now, let's look through the infotainment system. The infotainment system is well organized. The screen is pretty responsive to the touch. Not quite on iPad level, but also not far behind. The car has Pandora and OnStar navigation as options. The specific one does not, but it is available as an option. You also have an excellent audio system. Hey, uh, dog owners. Hey. Gets pretty loud if you turn it up. And the base is also quite excellent. Of course, like other cars at this price point, you can connect your phone through Bluetooth and take calls hand-free. You also have this cool projection feature where you can project your device onto the screen. It's going on to the settings menu. You have this cool valet mode, which basically limits some of the car's features if you want to give it to a valet. In addition to the optional OnStar navigation, the car also comes with Apple CarPlay. One thing I really like about the Camaro is the fact that important controls such as the climate controls as well as the home button, the volume knob, are all physical buttons and knobs as opposed to menus buried deep inside the infotainment screen. 
a lot of automakers these days provide giant screens with a dizzying array of options where even the most basic functions, including the climate control and volume knob, are buried deep inside. It's a bit cumbersome to use, especially when you're driving, because it's not always easy to click through a bunch of menus while keeping your eyes on the road at the same time. Because Chevy has a bunch of uh, physical buttons for his basic controls, it's possible to keep driving and adjust the climate control or volume at the same time. This car also comes with an excellent feature called the heads-up display, where some basic information like your speed and your RPM are projected onto the windshield. You can move the heads-up display up or down and display various pieces of information, such as your audio information, direction, etc. Another really cool interior feature is the ambient lighting in this car, specifically the light strips. You can see throughout the car we have these light strips on various pieces of trim. It can light up in a whole bunch of different colors. I'm going to change the color right over here. Let's make it pink just for fun. And look, I've got pink light strips. How cool is that? You can even tie these light strips to the driving mode if you want. Which is also an interesting thing. So that means if I put it in sport mode, it's nice and red. With regards to safety features, the Camaro comes with this reasonably high resolution backup camera along with turning guidelines. You also get rear parking sensors as well as blind spot assist. It's a pretty handy feature because the blind spot in this Camaro is pretty huge as you can see. The Camaro also has a rear cross traffic alert feature so if someone walks behind the car or another car comes from behind while you're reversing, it'll give you an alert. Great. Although it looks like a small car from the outside, the Camaro is surprisingly roomy up front. I'm 5 foot 9 and I have no problem sitting in here. I can push my seat all the way back and as you can see a pretty tall person can sit back in here. Now the rear seats are a completely different story. To access the rear seats, pull up on this tab and fold the seat forward. As you can see, it's incredibly tiny back here. I'm 5 foot 9 and I'm going to attempt to climb back here. Yep, I barely fit in here. When I sit upright, my head hits the ceiling. When I fold the front seat back, space is clearly at a premium. This is not a place for adults to spend a long time in, mainly for grocery bags and young kids. The rear seats don't really have any creature comforts, except for a wireless charger. With regards to interior quality, I have to say I'm pretty impressed by the Camaro. The seats are nice and comfortable. The interior looks well put together. Obviously, there's a lot of plastic in here, which is expected for a car at this price point. But obviously, everything's solid. Everything feels nice to touch. And, should I say, even feels kind of luxurious. There's a decent amount of storage in the Camaro. You get two compartments on either door. There's also a reasonably well-sized glove box as well as a center console which contains two USB ports. There's also a standard car charger socket. Prefacing the exterior, the Camaro takes a precarious stance, especially from the front. I personally like how the Camaro looks. Those black wheels and the red paint certainly make it like look like a cool American muscle car. You also get four exhaust tips and on sport mode, they sound better than Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. I am not kidding about that. That. To open the trunk, press twice on the button on the key fob. There's also a button on the interior. And as you can see, the trunk isn't particularly large. 9.1 cubic feet to be exact. The convertible hull has only 7.3 cubic feet. And that's certainly smaller than some of its rivals. Much smaller than the standard sedan. To be fair, however, if you're buying a 455 horsepower sports car, do you really, really care about the trunk? Another nice feature is that the rear seats can actually fold forward, revealing access to the trunk. If you have anything large or long that won't fit into the trunk, you can just fold the rear seats forward and just slide it through here. Pretty convenient. One thing I really like is this car's spoiler. A lot of automakers these days tack on giant spoil wings that look like they should be on a Formula One car onto normal vehicles. And personally, I like how the spoiler looks. It's nice and subdued and matches with the rest of this car's styling. Now, I'm going to start up the engine and rev it off a few times. Trust me, you're going to love this. Now, 
if you thought that sounded cool, what if I tell you that was only in normal mode? Let me rev it up again, except in sport. It's also worth noting that these headlights certainly look pretty cool, they're incredibly bright by the way and I think they go well with the front end of this car. Look, under the hood we've got this excellent Chevy V8 engine, puts out 455 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. This car is 0 to 60 in the low 4 second range and has a top speed of 165 miles per hour. Excellent figures in my opinion. The power is sent to the rear wheels through an 8 speed automatic transmission. All that power comes at a cost, however. According to the EPA, the 2016 Camaro SS is rated at 17 miles per gallon CD, 20 combined, and 28 highway. Although the highway figure is quite impressive, it's worth noting that for normal day-to-day -day city driving, you're likely not getting better than 21 or 22 MPG. So that was an overview of the features and specifications of the 2016 Chevy Camaro SS. But if you buy a sports car like this, what do you actually want to do? Drive it and get a feel for what an awesome performance vehicle this is. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Okay, driving the 2016 Chevy Camaro SS. Oh, pretty nice startup right there. Got this pretty nice rear view camera, which is essential because the blind spots in this car are absolutely massive. So, one thing I realized, this car is incredibly comfortable to drive on normal streets. Even though it's a performance car with a performance suspension and a giant engine, I really don't feel any different from driving in a Honda Civic or a Honda Accord, honestly, except for the giant blind spots. Now, when we're waiting at a stoplight, I can clearly hear the engines rumble throughout the cabin. Definitely sounds like a nice and angry sports car. Love that engine rumble. The Chevy V8 engines never get old. Yep, so driving on the expressway, this is once again a pretty comfortable car. One thing I do notice that at 50 to 55 miles per hour, the tire noise gets quite loud. That is expected because this is a low car with wide tires. Now, obviously, it's a performance car. You're not going to get a Rolls Royce or even Mercedes style uh, quiet cabin, but it is not too loud, honestly. I can have a conversation at 50 miles per hour, not too much of an issue. really permeates the cabin especially when I accelerate from zero miles per hour definitely a nice sound every time you press the accelerator you get that beautiful Chevy V8 sound so driving in the city I'm getting 14.7 miles per gallon that's to be expected because this is a 6.2 liter V8 it's a large displacement engine you're not gonna get such great fuel economy especially if you're in stop-and-go traffic all the time it is EPA rated at 28 miles per gallon highway so if you are cruising on eco mode for longer distances you will get better fuel economy, but to be fair, this is a performance car, it has a large engine. You are going to get between 15 and 22 miles per gallon if you are if you do live in the city and you are going in traffic. Okay, so we're getting onto the freeway right now. This should be exciting because this is, as I said, this is a really fast car. 0 to 16, low 4 second range. Top speed of 165 miles per hour. I'm not going to go that fast, obviously, but at least we can get a feel for how this car drives on the highway. Okay. Let's give it a gas, bit of gas right now. Oh yeah, this thing is fast, oh my god. When I press the accelerator at roughly 60 miles per hour, it actually feels like a normal car starting from zero. This engine definitely does not run out of power. It's definitely exciting to drive on the highway. I'm going to keep it within the speed limit, obviously, but certainly if you take it out onto a racetrack, you are not going to be disappointed. One thing that is certain on the highway when I'm going at about 70 miles per hour, is quite loud. I can hear it all throughout the cabin. I definitely have to talk a bit loud to have a conversation. But once again, like I said, this is a performance car. It has big tires. It's low to the ground. You are going to get a lot of tire noise and that's just expected with sports cars like the Camaro. One huge benefit to this car, honestly, is ride quality. Even though it's, uh, like I said, it has uh, sport-tuned suspension, it's uh, low to the ground, it's a sports car. 
I am quite comfortable cruising along the highway. This is a pretty old highway, but still, uh, I don't feel the right to be quite bumpy at all. A lot of sports cars, you'll be rocked all over the place when uh, going on bumpy roads. But honestly, with this Camaro, it just feels like a normal car, honestly. And I think Chevy has really gotten that down. It handles well and it has good ride quality. That's certainly a wonderful combination to have. So now I'm going on a winding road right now. This is definitely a good time to see how well this car handles and how fun it is to drive. The car is really planted, it handles really well. It just feels like a fun and nice and zippy car to go around. The acceleration is excellent, so obviously that's a plus point. Handling is also good. This is probably one of the best handling cars I've been in. And for the price point, definitely it's almost sports car handling. Obviously, uh, this is a great car to drive on weekdays and going to work. This is also a great car that you can just take onto the winding roads on weekends and just have some fun with your friends. Display. Like I said, uh, I don't have to uh, keep looking at the gauge cluster just to get my speed and my RPMs. I can just keep looking straight ahead and there it is. My tachometer and my speedometer is projected right onto the windshield. Definitely love that feature. Stop. So now let's talk transmission. I like this transmission. It has 8 gears like I said. It's an 8 speed automatic transmission. Obviously the shifts are not going to be as fast as a dual clutch transmission which is what many 2021 performance cars and especially the German performance cars have. But it is pretty quick, it's smooth, I enjoy it. You can see the downshifts are nice. Stop. With regards to steering, I really like how the Camaro steers. The steering is nice and heavy, it's well weighted, it's not at all vague. It's almost as good as some German sports cars in my opinion. Definitely nice for winding roads and if you take it onto the track, you'll definitely not be disappointed. Wonderful steering, especially for this price point. I can see the whole Silicon Valley. Oh yeah, on straight stretches this car is awesome. Wonderful noise, fast acceleration. Stop. This is definitely a great car to have. It's excellent on winding roads, planted, stable, handles well, accelerates hard. The ride quality is pretty good too, I never thought that. Obviously there's going to be a lot of engine noise and a lot of road noise in the cabin, but that's to be expected with a car like this. I mean, not that it'll matter, that engine noise is excellent. It's honestly a symphony in my opinion. It's also a good daily driver, there's a decent amount of cargo space, you can also put extra stuff in the rear seats. There's a decent amount of safety features, the tech is nice, the cabin is comfortable. Overall, I highly recommend this car if you're looking for a practical sports car on a budget. And that's the 2016 Chevrolet Camaro SS. A wonderful car in my opinion. If you're looking for features, practicality, and performance, all under a budget, well, this is the car for you. For my final thoughts, I'd really like to say that the Chevy Camaro checks all the boxes from ride quality to performance to technology. I really think the Camaro has it all. It's wonderful to drive. The engine sounds great. It's relatively practical and comfortable, and it has a decent host of technology and safety features. If you're looking for a high performance car that you can also drive daily, well, look no further than a used Chevy Camaro SS. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time.